Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. I'm a freelance web and mobile applications developer. Today I'm going to be showing you five different tools, software that I use on a daily basis. Basically, I use these pretty much every day in every project that I use. So I'm going to go into my desktop at the moment and be warned, it is about 5K, so you might have to adjust the resolution a little bit. So right into the uh, the screen here, let's get remove OBS out the way. Um, the first thing I'm going to be talking about is my terminal. That is iTerm. So I'm going to bring that up here. And let's just make it slightly bigger. The best thing about iTerm is that you can actually split up your screen into several different sessions. So if I was to press Control D here, then I can split that vertically. If I was to press Control Shift D, then we have it in horizontal. And I can have as many of these as I wish. It's fantastic uh, when you're using profiles and as a freelancer, I can create different profiles for different clients. I can uh, run different scripts whenever a profile is activated. I can access different profiles using different shortcut keys as well. And there's loads and loads of things in iTerm that I haven't even delved with myself. Before iTerm, I was using things like just the standard uh, bash terminal shell that you would normally get on Mac or on Linux. Um, I chose iTerm because I, I actually found it very useful, especially when using different scripts that I kind of needed to watch. So I had perhaps the terminal um, tailing on one screen, like in here, and then I was actually doing stuff in this screen. So I could actually see the output and the input at the same time. Very, very handy. So do check out iTerm if you're running a Mac. Now, the next thing I'm going to be talking about is my IDE. So this is what I use to actually write code. Sometimes I use ID, um, sorry, iTerm to write code. And if I was to do that, then I would use things like Vim. Or if that's not available, then I would use perhaps Nano or just straight cat. Uh, but when I'm actually writing code, I'm using um, things like PHP Storm or uh, PyCharm. If it is PHP, it's PHP Storm. If it's Python, it's PyCharm. So first of all, I'm going to show you what uh, PHP Storm looks like. And this is basically it. They're very similar in the sense of how it looks. And now I choose the dark theme because I find it very easier on the old eyes. Um, this is the How to Code Well website uh, that I've got checked out here. Um, and it's pretty simple. If I was to, let's uh, let's throw up one of these scripts. So if I go into site and then SRC, let's take a look at one of these. Um, let's take a look at one of the controllers, perhaps. Let's go to the front end and choose. Uh, let's choose the home page controller. Very simple. So it kind of throws up a very nice, easy to read, easy to follow. Color is already there with the dark theme. Very, very handy. It's also extremely easy to actually search through things. So for example, if I was to just right click, uh, let's say the site, for example, and then let's do uh, a search. So I could do find in path. And I can find various bits and pieces. I can also find in a module. I can find in the in the project. Very, very handy to actually navigate your way through um, an IDE. Now, this is extremely, um, it can be extremely resource hungry. My iMac that I'm running here is very, very, very powerful. This is actually what I use to do my uh, the editing and my encoding on. Um, so it's extremely powerful. And I've actually got this running at the same time as PyCharm. PyCharm is what I use for uh, Python, believe it or not. They're both created by IntelliJ or JetBrains, I should say. And uh, JetBrains is a, a fantastic company, obviously made by developers for developers. I'm certainly not sponsored by um, JetBrains at all here, although I would say 
that uh, these are paid for applications. However, the PyCharm, I'm using the Community Edition, which is free, which you can download. And of course, you can download the PHP Storm, kind of like a, a trial version as well. PyCharm has pretty much the same um, features in terms of searching and replacing, which is very, very handy. It obviously uses the different types of debugging uh, that Python has on offer. And also it has uh, a very easy way of controlling your virtual environments as well. Now I use Docker a lot to actually create my applications. That is the next tool that I basically couldn't live re without because regardless of the project that I'm doing, if it's on Docker in production or not, I'm still using Docker locally. And I use Docker just to uh, simply sort of isolate the projects. I've spoken about this loads. I've got my own Docker in motion course that I've created for Manning Publications. It's five and a half hours long. I'll put a, a link in the show notes and at the top in the cards here. It's a five and a half hour beginner friendly Docker course. I use Docker all the time. I also use Kubernetes. I also use uh, Docker Machine and Docker Compose. In fact, I use Docker machine to create different machines for different projects. Like I said, I do this regardless of whether it's actually going to be Docker in production. Um, and that way I can have different versions of PHP, different versions of Python that I can run through Docker files. Um, and that just allows me to isolate and segregate those different projects, which means that I'm not completely contaminating different projects with different PHP extensions or different um, Python uh, pip packages, that kind of thing. So that is another tool that I use, Docker. The next tool that I use is obviously the browsers. Now I use Safari quite a bit and I have to say I develop in Safari a lot, but at the same time I test in things like Chrome and Firefox. So when I just want to make sure a page is actually working and actually running, then I'll use Safari. I'll also use Safari if I want to test for, for browser compatibility or uh, responsiveness. So if I went to develop here, the develop menu, scroll down to where are we? Enter responsive design mode. Here you can see there's uh, different modes that you can go on. So for example, that's the iPhone 8. So that's what it looks like on the iPhone 8. Uh, this is what it looks like on the iPad Pro, and this is what it looks like on the 1920 by 1080 screens. I find this very, very handy to understand how the, the application runs on different devices. Now, I also use a tool, and I, I'm kind of sort of adding this on as a, a, the sixth tool, uh, called Ghost Lab. I don't know if you noticed, but behind me, there was a device lab. It's basically like a, a, a sort of a, a velvet or it's not really velvet. It's actually a, um, a Velcro pad that I can put mobile phones on. And you'll be seeing in future videos that when I'm doing my mobile testing, um, those mobile phones are on that Velcro pad. Velcro device lab. And I use something called ghost lab, which is a Chrome extension, which means that I can change and manipulate multiple devices all at once. It's very, very handy. I haven't really used it in anger much. I've only been using it when there is a real niggly issue. And I just simply cannot uh, fathom what is wrong using ghost lab with multiple devices where I can do a single line of code change and then suddenly five different mobile phones change. Some are in different orientations. And I should say here, what I can do is change the orientation by double clicking. So that's horizontal and vertical. Um, I can do that as well on Ghost Lab by just having multiple different devices set up. Now, the next thing that I use or the last tool that I use, and I should say that this isn't in any particular order, is, of course, Postman. This is Postman up here. Postman allows me to create API requests, and it is extremely awesome. And every day I'm finding new and better tools and features within Postman. One that I've recently discovered is the ability to create different environments that have different variables. So here I've got my dev environment. And if I was to go into settings here, 
uh, and manage environments, I can see that uh, I can create a URI, which is just a key value pair. And let's close that down. And I can use that in this uh, curly bracket sort of namespace here. So URI, so that's the what I can change it to. So imagine, I mean, this is the order management system that I'm creating for one of my Python courses. Imagine if you will, that you had loads, like literally hundreds of API calls and you had to change something in every different API call. But you can use your environment variables um, like that to adjust those things. And you, you've got a drop down here so you can change your different environments. So if you had an environment for testing, if you had an environment for, say, uh, production or an environment for development, that's what you can do. Another cool feature that I've discovered here is that you can actually um, export and import your uh, Postman tests. They're kind of called tests. They're not strictly tests. I would use Codeception for testing, especially for the PHP side, but you can export these in JSON. So these become sort of JSON uh, requests and you can save those to source control, um, which means that anytime a new API is being created, you can, you can all share that API request. Um, I won't show you an API request running here because I haven't got the Docker stuff, the Docker machines running for this particular project. So they're the tools that I use on a daily basis. I'm sure that over time, the, these are going to change. And when they do, I'll let you know. And I'm sure that this is very different for you guys. This is very tailored towards a Mac user um, or a Linux user. So it's going to be very different if you're a Windows guy because your IDEs will be totally different and perhaps your um, you, the way you interact with the terminal will be very different as well. Now, I mentioned about the device lab. This is the device lab here. This is the, um, the, the board that I stick the phones on whenever I get a new phone. What I do is I put a Velcro strip on the back, put it onto there and then connect it through USB, wire it all up to here and then away I go. Now, if you've got any suggestions, any improvements to this setup, then let me know. I'll be interested to hear what you guys think. Put your thoughts down in the comments section below. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. Do subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.